Hello there. All right, today we're going to learn about goat handling and restraint um, as well as transport. Um, so we've got two of our um, impromptu goats here. So we've got Baxter and Scout. Um, so Scout here is a female bull goat. So um, bull goats can be distinguished from other breeds um, by their stockier build because they are a meat producing goat. They tend to have a bit more musculature than the dairy goats. Um, so oftentimes these guys can have a white body as well as a brown face and neck. Um, however, this can change with the individual. Um, so identification methods that we can use for goats include tags, um, collars, um, you can also microchip, but however, if you've got a large herd, sometimes this isn't always viable. Um, so with Scout here, so we're going to show you how to approach an animal um, and try and herd them together to capture them. Um, so in that case with goats, we want to make sure we don't spook them um, when we approach them. So nice, calm and gentle manner is best. Um, Oftentimes they can scatter, jump, or potentially start to headbutt if they feel. Alright, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and capture our goat or separate the individual from the herd. So with goats, um, the best way to do this is just put them into either a small pen or if you um, if you have available a race, um, which will allow us to um, try and restrain the individual for examination. So what you can do if you have a large herd, um, you can try and um, attract like the queen doe or um, the leader of the herd um, to try and encourage the rest to follow her. However, goats are a little bit more um, independent than sheep, so this sometimes doesn't work as well as you'd hope. Um, so what we can do, so we want to approach um, calm, calmly and carefully around our animals, so we don't want them to spook. Um, so what you can do, so to restrain your goats or to capture them, you can grab their front leg and hold their head close to the body. So um, alternatively, another way to restrain for physical examination is to back them into a corner. And then what we want to do is we want to straddle either side of their body um, and hold their head. Sometimes if they have got quite large horns, you can hold onto the horns, though this is not ideal as it can potentially cause injury when they threaten. So um, once we've captured an animal, we can start to put on um, a method to be able to lead them around the clinic if we need to. So you can sort of use a um, collar and lead um, in some goats, otherwise they do make little heart, um, head halters as well um, as a way to lead them. So what we want to do then is to try and keep hand close um, to the body and then just lead them um, into their pen for examination or um, into the clinic where they need to be treated. Okay so once we've examined our animal um, and we've got them restrained um, what we can do is then clean their pen. Um, so what we want to make sure is that they have access to um, forage so fresh grass um, as well as or potentially hay. Um, so with um, goats, they are sort of ruminants, so they have their full guts where they digest all their food through fermentation. So it's really important that they have adequate um, roughage in their diet. Um, so what we're going to do um, is we're going to... All right, so once we have our patient restrained, um, so what you can do is you can either um, opt to um, have another nurse or another vet um, be able to um, keep them separate from the pen that we want to clean. Um, so it's very important that they have access to fresh food or roughage um, because they are ruminants. They do require um, that extra fibre in their gut to ferment and digest their food properly. Um, so ideally you want to have um, access to fresh grass or if you don't have that, um, some fresh or a freshish hay or good quality hay. Um, so what we're going to do um, is we're going to clean her water bowl and show you where we can store their food. So ideally you want to make sure that their food is thrown out if they haven't eaten it, so to save the spoilage and to ensure that the hay that they're being given is being kept properly, so no access to rodents 
or moisture. So a big thing is if they get moisture in the hay, they can get mould and other potential microbes can grow. So we don't want that um, being injected by our patient, especially if they're quite sick anyway. Um, so what we usually do for their food and their water bowls is we use something called phase 4 disinfectant. Um, so this is diluted to a rate of one part um, disinfectant to 100 parts water. Okay, so we dilute that one down to um, 5 mils of uh, disinfectant to 500 mils of water. Um, so we want to do that one. Is we have drained our water dish down here, so we want to keep um, a nice plastic one. If you haven't got a hard plastic, sometimes the soft plastic rubber ones are very good because they are not going to injure themselves on them. Um, and what we want to do is we just need to make sure we spray all of the surface properly. So make sure every surface is covered. That needs to sit for about 15 or 20 minutes um, for the sufficient contact time to kill off any microbes. Um, then after that's been and done, we would rinse that one off and fill it with fresh water. Um, so it's important that our patients have fresh water um, access at all times, unless for any reason they um, are going to be sedated um, or have treatment that um, would contraindicate that.